Welcome to the 2024 Chinese Grand Prix reaction. And I'm here with Captain once again. Hello, I'm back. I'm back after a little break. And I'm very glad to be back. I'm very happy to be here with you once again. And uh, to talk about what was a interesting race weekend. I agree. Uh, yes. yes. Interesting. And we're also very glad to have you back as well. Thank and, you. Uh, it's been a... It's been a well, I wouldn't say like the most exciting Grand Prix ever, but it was definitely the best this year, I would say. Yes, you know what? As I think that's a fair point. Yeah. The sprint kind uh, of gave it this yeah. interesting vibe. We had like four competitive sessions. It was, we had at least some, some unpredictability, especially with the sprint qualifying. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Especially with the sprint qualifying, yes, for yeah. sure. We can start pretty pretty regularly. I mean, the practice was kind of okay. It was low grip, but it was in like Turkey 2020 levels. The drivers struggled, but they overcame it. But then, um, sprint qualifying. SQ1, uh, Perez. I was going to say, Phil. Yeah. Practice. We had the shock of uh, Lance Stroll getting first. Oh yeah, I, I kind of kind of <laughs> forgot about that because uh, when you look at the entire weekend, it was yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, SQ one was pretty pretty okay. No notable things. I don't think so. Um, the one the one thing that surprised me was Ricardo better than Sonoda this weekend for the entire weekend pretty much beat him at yeah. every single session, which was I mean good for his career. I mean he's not getting dropped mid season if he keeps this up, but still I don't really feel like that's Red Bull worthy. They it certainly wasn't a good weekend really for them, and um, but. You know, it was it was solid enough. It was solid enough. Yeah, Yuki is allowed to have an off weekend after those first four races. Yeah, yeah, he he definitely had a worse weekend, but you know, overall the uh, team didn't have the best weekend ever. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, SQ two. Um, I only remember Russell being knocked out. I think it was like a very very close margin with. Lewis jumping in front of him. I think it was yes. both Sauber's in SQ3 ahead of Russell, which was Yes, it was. They were also ahead of Hamilton, if I'm not mistaken. Because I, I know Russell and Hamilton were very close in SQ2 as well. So it yeah. was yeah, it was a it was it was a shaky start to the weekend for them. But luckily, uh <laughs> I think uh, we yeah. could talk sort of about the the fact Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso evidently still got a lot in the tank in terms of just their skill on the track and what they're able to do with the car, especially in uh, surprise wet weather conditions in China. Um, yeah. And, you know, the, um, we haven't raced this, a lot of the drivers haven't raced this track in three, four years or five, maybe even. Um, yeah. So the fact that it then began to rain uh, coming into uh, Sprint Collie uh, 1 or Sprint Collie 3, sorry. Uh, at the um, end of Sprint Collie 2, it started raining. And yes. SQ3 was fully yes. wet. Um, but yeah, you know, the rain uh, greatly affected everyone. And But Alonso and Hamilton rose to the occasion, but then got pipped to the post at the very, very end uh, yeah. by. Uh, some cheeky ch track <laughs> limits. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a weird thing. When I look at, I was I was at work. I was watching from my phone and just I saw Lando just cut his lap back. I, I thought he crossed the line, but then when I saw him like on the opposite side of the track, I was like, "What? <laughs> How did he get there?" And, and yeah, mm. the lap deletion and reinstation was weird, but within the rules, I guess. Um, they definitely need to maybe be a bit more on that because I was just thinking, you know, with Hamilton, he was Hamilton was still on a lap, uh, and they didn't reinstate Norris's lap until the end of it. Yeah. So there's a bit of a thing where it's like, 
could Hamilton could have improved, but it was not given the chance to. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, it's yeah. just it's not really that huge in the end of it. Yeah, I don't know if it's if it was confirmed that Hamilton got the got the information that he got he got the pole position, but. I mean, Norris got the lap reinstated while Hamilton was in sector three, so mm. he pretty much sure. had to do the entire sector two while being in the first. Then everyone finished his lap. Hamilton was P1 confirmed for like five seconds, and then Norris got the lap back. So I don't know if there was a time margin where the team could have told him to slow down because he got pole position. And yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it was confirmed through team radio that Hamilton actually slowed down. So yeah, we would never know. Yeah, definitely, definitely, it was it was an interesting uh, few seconds, I guess is 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 the term. Yeah. Uh, it all felt very much like what's happening here. Yeah, and mentioning SQ three, obviously Lando pole position. His second pole position, technically not the pole position as well, because it's sprint, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, and obviously, as you mentioned, Lewis and Fernando in P2 and P3 with with cars that shouldn't be ahead of any Red Bulls or Ferraris, and they just both almost got pulled. Yeah. Wow. Incred- incredible scenes, incredible yeah. scenes from the two of them, and uh, just. Very, very uh, well done. Yeah, indeed. The only two race winners, at least before the Grand Prix itself, because obviously Max now has a Chinese Grand Prix win. But before that, those two were the only Grand Prix winners around China on the grid. So yeah, it kind of helps, <laughs> I guess. All right. Yes, um, definitely, definitely. But then the sprint race is definitely, I think, the highlight of the whole season so far. Oh, yeah. Sprint was probably the most exciting session, even though SQ3 had the, had the rain. We had the sprint, which started with Lionel Norris on pole position, Lewis Hamilton alongside him, and Fernando Alonso with Max Verstappen behind him. This looked like an amazing battle to be to be seen by them, obviously. Lando with his typical move at the start of the race, screwing another chance of a victory. I mean, it was it was very ambitious, but it was simply no grip on the outside at the end of the turn, and just, yeah. Unfortunately, Lando will get his first win some, well, sometime in the future, but it's not this day. And yeah, Lewis led half the sprint until Max got the stars up the, well, Got some heat into the stars and obviously moved to the RB20 speed, destroying Mercedes everywhere and just cruised away to victory. I think Max got like over 10 seconds of a gap in front of Lewis as well in the sprint or something ridiculous. It was, yeah. Obviously, the Mercedes had no, no right to be in P2 where he finished. Lewis P2 from the sprint. That was an amazing drive. But yeah, the rest of the weekend didn't really follow. Um, no. Yeah, uh, P3 was red, I think. Obviously, we yes. off the entire uh, four car battle that we had behind mm. the entire thing. What were your thoughts? It was it was an incredible battle. I I absolutely adored it. Um, it was, it was missing the uh, off because it, it, it reminded me of Silverstone with the uh, off goes Sainz uh, f- and through goes Perez. And maybe it was a little <laughs> less uh, showy about it, is what I'll say. It was it was it was a lot less temp. It was a lot uh, more tempered from the commentary team, um, but it did remind me of that sort of battle that they had in Silverstone. And yeah, it was just amazing to see. It was amazing to see an actual, you know, race basically happening on track, and, and with so many drivers trying to battle for that uh, placement. Um, obviously, eventually we saw uh, Paris come out on top, uh, and the unfortunate loser of that whole battle was Alonso. Um, yeah. But 
it was yeah, it was it was it was a good it was a good little battle, and I uh, I enjoyed it a lot. I'm glad uh, F1 is is having this sort of resurgence. It, you know, in the midfield, we all expect yeah. Max to win, but uh, every now and again, a little nice little race in the midfield happening isn't very good, and you know. They have nothing to lose, really. Nothing to gain, nothing to lose during these battles. So, I mean, what is six points going to really mean at the end of the season? We'll see. But yeah. it was good. Yeah, it was the uh, amazing battle. Uh, it was very fun to watch. And yeah, I'm really glad I woke up for it because I almost overslept the entire time. <laughs> and yeah, I, I wish the I watched the sprint first and the qualifying, and I had it pre-recorded, thankfully, because I could wake up well in time for the uh, for the thingy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sprint overall was great. Unfortunately, we still didn't have we really have the battle for the win, even though there was there were like, yeah, Hamilton tried his best. There was nothing really he could do against Max in his RB twenty. Going three hundred and eighty miles per hour behind this on the street. That's yeah. I mean, apart from that, it was a it was a great sprint. A lot of battles across the entire field, and we had some. Well, we had Joe finishing P nine, which was yeah, oh, so so close to that one point. I would have moved Sauber two places and constructors. I believe they're in death place right now. So yeah, that does probably need points, and and yeah, we'll get to Sauber for uh, well, as a as a talking point later on, obviously. Yes, Magnussen, Magnussen P ten, so showing the has has some great pace around this track as well. Um, yeah, apart from that, I don't really remember much from the sprint. Well, obviously, it's uh, a shame that Joe didn't manage to get that one point. He was obviously a bit far away from Russell, yeah. but. Um, yeah, would be nice. Would it be nice? Yeah. Yeah, that's it for sprint, I think. Then we have qualifying, which was dry this time, fully dry for an intern. Yes, yeah, sadly so. <laughs> and, and yeah, we got the expected result of, well, um, what was it? I, I, yeah, it was the Red Bull 1 2, right? Yes, it yeah. was. <laughs> okay, okay, good for you. <laughs> Would, yes, uh, good points for me, uh, which I I need to be honest because when when we talk about the race, I was so so close. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Perez and Max up top, um, good one two from them, uh, and uh, what we really expect, they were miles ahead of everyone else in the end. Yeah. Uh, I say miles ahead, but you know, uh, Max was. A half a second above any other driver bar Perez and Perez was still uh two temps up on Alonso. Yeah. So there was uh, very little anyone could do. Um and uh, yeah, it was it was a shock that Alonso was in third though. Uh was not expecting that. Obviously coming off the sprint race where he was he didn't finish and obviously got a uh, ten second penalty as well. Yeah. Um so I was very shocked at Alonso's position. Again, two thirds from Alonso in qualifying just couldn't do anything in the race. And then uh, the McLarens were ahead of the Ferraris, which was definitely a bit of a shock as well. Uh, it was obviously close in the midfield. It was a lot closer than it was Max and Perez. I think everyone between Alonso and like Sainz was within maybe a tenth, a tenth and a half. Yeah. Uh, so way closer, but yeah, big shock, big shock. Uh, the other shock was I, I feel we, I should mention uh, Hockenberg and Bottas making it into the final session. Both drivers managing to make it. In. Yeah, great drivers from both of them. Unfortunately, only one driver had their engine finish the entire race. <laughs> yes, sadly so. Sadly so. Yeah. Uh... Oh yes. Uh, oh, the big. Yeah. We should. Yeah, we should mention the other big shock of yeah. Lewis Hamilton out in eighteenth. Yeah, that was that was so confusing because because yeah, I'm. I, 
when I finished just watching the sprint, I logged into the qualifying because it was still in, in Q1. And I just saw Hamilton 18th, like walking through the pit lane. I was like, what? I just quickly reversed back. And, and yeah, I mean, even even with, without a mistake, it was it would be still a very, very difficult thing for him to get into Q3, for example. He yeah, was yeah, just lacking pace compared to Russell. I don't know what happened overnight, but he, he seemed to have a different setup or something like that again. I don't know why the Mercedes do that when he finally scores some good points in the sprint. And he, how, how, how did it happen? I just, I'm just confused. Yeah. Um, it's just chaos. This is, it is incredible chaos of, uh, of F1 in the end, but uh, yeah, they were. I, I don't know what is going on with Mercedes. I have no idea. I wish I do, but uh... they just always seem to have one driver up there and one driver like nowhere. And just I... well, I'd love to even say up there, but the truth is, Norris, uh, sorry, not Norris, uh, Russell was still what, eight, only eighth, right? Uh, I think P8 in qualifying, yeah. Yeah, it's just, just shocking, you know. Yeah, for, but yeah, I guess, I guess it follows the line of them being the third worst, uh, the fourth worst car. But I don't know. I just, I, I, it still hasn't sunk in that they should be that right, even after all this, all this uh, time. Them being the fourth worst car is a, it's a shock. Yeah, I, I it's maybe just my feeling. Uh, if if Mercedes drivers like if, if George and Lewis had the Aston Martin car from this year, the the one mm. also was driving, I think they would be ahead of Mercedes. I don't know. Generally, yeah, I think no, the I Aston is, is was a better car throughout the first five races overall. It's just that Fernando, yeah, the sprint cost him the the place above Russell in the drivers' championship, and obviously there's Stroll, who is a whole singular topic on in himself uh, apart from him not scoring points there um yeah <laughs> yeah a lot of, a lot totally strong. <laughs> um yeah you mentioned Hulkamering and Bottas obviously um those two destroying their teammates in qualifying uh again I I kinda hope Joe would carry that speed from Spring qualifying, he just got knocked down in Q1 again, and Bottas going to mm-hmm. Q3 doesn't look great. I mean, if you're trying to save your career at this rate, it doesn't look like he's going to continue past this year. But luckily, he got to drive on his in his country. So yeah, fine. and they honestly, they, it was such a loud noise anytime he was nearby. Yeah, um, the support he got this weekend is is very. Well, probably even more so to the support the English, the British drivers get in uh, in Silverstone. It's the only one I can personally attest to because being there, the amount of like noise they make. I mean, the amount of noise when uh, Norris managed to pass uh, Verstappen at the start of the last Silverstone Grand Prix. So yeah, they they obviously adore him, and it is it's one of those things where it's difficult because evidently he is extremely talented um it's just he's not as talented as the other best drivers in the world but uh you know they uh they they certainly put a show on for him and uh it must be a great honor as well yeah i i feel like i would probably feel exactly the same if i was to drive an f1 car in front of my country like yeah, it would be very emotional. But yeah, yeah, I couldn't. I could. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> just, just feel like it would be better in a better circumstance. Like if if he gets to finish P fourteen or P fifteen and uh, get a <laughs> get his own. I don't know how to say it. Just this this thing that wasn't the grid. And he was like parking in front of it. Oh yeah, he got his box. Yes, yes, he got. It's called a box. box, like the 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 winners get. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There, it was. 
I mean, when I saw it live, I was kind of like, look, I was like, wow, that's cool. And it's like kind of funny, but yeah, P14 to get there. I mean, yeah. If we would see that on like every single track for like drivers having their home race, I think they'll be make sense. But like P14, I don't, I don't really know if there's anything to, to really celebrate there. It's just that. Like in the hindsight, in hindsight, I just don't feel like it was it was that well that yeah. logical. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. Well, at least the home fans enjoyed their driver at least once, because <laughs> uh, I don't really feel like a Chinese driver is gonna come to the grid anytime I... soon. At least from what I've seen. Well, we, we, yeah, yeah, I guess. I, I, I don't know. I think Joe might still end up being there next year just because of the amount of sponsorship he brings. But uh, what team though? Williams. Hmm? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not. In, I'm, I have no idea. But I feel like there might, there might be. I mean, one sec. Then what was my driver lineup prediction? Maybe Alpine. Um, should I should I go check that see what if I, where I put it's, him? It's like, I put him in Williams. Yeah, so there you go. Okay, <laughs> interesting. Um, yeah, Williams. There's a there's a little bit of a rumor going around that Williams might kick out Logan Sargent after the Miami Grand Prix and put in Antonelli for Imola. And I have no idea how to feel about that because a 17 year old. Driving an F1 car in the in his Grand Prix for the first time since Max, just wow! It was that's very early for Antonelli, even though his talent is obviously undoubtable. He's his mm. his junior career is like like uh, beyond impressive, but still, it, I feel like it's too early. He was winning uh, Formula Renault Euro Cup or how, how however it's called just last year, and he's getting. Formula One. I just don't feel like that's gonna work. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I would honestly, if it if it was me, I would not re-sign Sergeant for this year. But for some reason, they yes. just did, and yes. now they must be regretting that choice a lot. Yeah, no, I uh, I agree. It's just. I don't understand. I mean, uh, the Williams in general looks quite slow around uh, this year, so um, hopefully they'll bounce back come late in the season. But yeah, they're not. They're not doing good. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I guess we move to the Grand Prix, um, which we had Max Verstappen. Winning once again. Holy moly! Who could yeah. have seen this coming? Yeah, that was a that was a shocker. I was like, didn't expect that. Um. Anyways, uh, that's a point. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, by the way, I've got a point for Norris in P four. Oh, you was it P four? Yeah, I believe he was P four. Yeah, he was P four. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. I, I, I actually. Forgot about it. I thought, I thought it was P three. I forgot it was P three. No, no, no yes, That's that's a lot of points for you. Uh, oh well, it could be a lot more if literally if I place Norris in second, then I would have got the entire top five right. That's also true. But I think something order. similar happened last weekend as well. Really? Yes, yeah. true, true. Uh, if you would have moved, I'm getting forward. close. I'm getting close. Yeah, indeed. Um, P2 was Lana Norris, and um, wow, what a drive on Sunday after that. Well, while in the sprint, that was not great, but then on Sunday, just a flawless P2. That was nothing really more he, he could have done. Just a no, great drive. Yeah, yeah, pretty drive, pretty pretty drive. From a very very skilled driver who uh, is just showing showing he's he's got the skills to pay the bills at the current point. Yeah, uh, yeah he's been he's been amazing. Yeah, he's been owning Piastri uh, as well for a couple of weekends in a row, which oh, is for sure. I would say that's more Norris being very good uh, than Piastri being underwhelming, but still Piastri could have could have been better. 
But the, the gap is still not that big. Uh, it, it's mainly in the race itself, because in qualifying, Piastri was like one tenth behind Norris, and that's pretty much nothing in Formula 1. When you, when you look at it from, from the perspective of the gap that's in the finish line, the one tenth of a second is like half a car, or I think the entire car maybe. So, yeah, uh, close margins. Um, yeah. P3. Oh, I got this right. <laughs> what? <laughs> P3 spread. Wow. Okay. I actually forgot I got the press P3. You did, you did. I just had to finish right on P2. I, I have no idea how to get to the point here. <laughs> oh. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, a decent weekend from Perez that was not like not the greatest weekend from Checo but still a podium in both sprint and the race well kind of what Red Bull want from him and if he, if he keeps getting on the podium every single race I don't feel like there's a reason to replace him at the moment yeah yeah I agree I agree B4 was Charles Leclerc so no points if we both went with science. Uh, um, drop all of my top, all of those one down, and I've, I've, I've hit masterclass. Yeah, very, I mean, very annoying. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> and Charles had a pretty decent weekend overall. It's just that Ferrari wasn't wasn't very good. I mean, he he got what P four in the sprint, I think, and. The P4 in the race itself. So, yeah, pretty good weekend from Charles. It was a uh, yeah, Ferrari wasn't very good on this track. It was behind the McLaren as well. That didn't, that didn't help. And yeah, he beat signs pretty much every in pretty much every single session. And yeah, good for good from good work from Charles after a couple of weekends be, being beaten by science yeah yeah i was gonna say especially after the recent uh few races he definitely needed to one-up his teammate a bit uh show there was a reason that he's the one that's gonna stay at the team at the very least yeah yeah indeed and science p5 mentioning him he had a decent weekend just was worlds and charles but also the ferrari wasn't great so yeah at least i mean p5 is still a Good points, uh, considering Ferrari space this weekend. Yeah. And yeah. Um, okay, fastest lap. I think that was that was Alonso, right? So no points. Here. Uh oh, I don't actually know. Yeah, Alonso got a um, fastest lap point because of uh, his new tires at the, end, at the end of the race. He did. Yes, you are correct. So okay, we get to the get to the. Well, rest of the Grand Prix should probably move uh, to uh, the results if there are any notable ones. Um, well, obviously, Hulkamari and P10, another point finish for Haas. Their fifth point finish uh, combined in the season already. Um, yeah, it's crazy. That's such an improvement. I think they already have more points finishes than last year, if I'm not mistaken. So, great improvements from Haas. Uh, no one expected I would not be shocked. <laughs> yeah. I'm still being shocked by just how good Hazard each weekend. They just seem to be always up there in the in the points ping area. So yeah, yeah, good good from Haz. Um, obviously, Ocon in P11. Another notable mention in that awful Alpine that this year he came well very close to the points, five seconds behind Hulkenberg in the end. So. Five seconds away from a single singular point from Ocon. Yeah, very good from Ocon. Uh, like it's 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 such a trash car. Uh, <laughs> so to be that close. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, you know. Okay. So we good. Yeah, we kind of move away from the results themselves, and we move to the DNFs. Um. We had three DNFs, if I'm correct, right? Two our yes. two yes. Toro Rosso's and uh, one only last stroll. <laughs> okay, when I want to start. Or uh, oh, in 
in terms of uh, okay, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, you can you can jump on it if you want. I don't think either of us get the least impressive team, right? Um, yeah, that would be a because um, that that has to go to Tauros, so. Yeah, obviously, I just uh, went to get uh, the last troll topic out of the way because. Oh, sorry. Yes, non stroll. Um, the, my bad. Biggest uh, last... Yeah, it could, it could go. Well, he's just he's 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 not very good, is he? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know where to go with it. Other than that, I don't know why he's still deciding to race, even because um, obviously it's his decision to race, but. Yeah. It can't be entertaining being demolished by your teammate. Not once, not twice, but three times in a weekend. That must just be completely and utterly heartbreaking as a driver just to deal with. I mean, uh, technically, he beat him in one session. Let's, let's give him his props. He uh, <laughs> beat him in the sprint race, uh, at the very least. Um, but look, look at his results through the weekend. where. It, Whereas uh, Alonso qualified P3, you know, Lance Stroll was down in 15th. He then came 14th in, uh, wait, yeah, he came 14th in the sprint race. Yeah. Uh, so he only gained one position, and that's from his teammate. Uh, <laughs> and, and then he qualifies in, in yet again, just a terrible position in 11th. And you might be like, okay, he, fit, he got 11th, he can probably kick on and maybe get a few places and get some points. You know, Alonso qualified Q3. That car is obviously quite quick on this circuit. But no, uh, Lance Stroll did not gain any... Uh, well, he did not gain any places. In fact, he lost places. He uh, finished 15th in the end. I, I just... Yeah. It's just a uh, terrible, terrible, terrible drive. <laughs> yeah, pretty much summed it up. I mean, <laughs> that's not very much to say. The, the incident itself is pretty much crystal clear. Uh, he just didn't look ahead of himself, just destroyed Ricardo's entire race. I mean, he had yeah, so much time. Yeah, that. it was. Yeah, and he, it's the second time he's done it on this track because he did it to Vettel. Oh, when? When was that? Uh, uh, I can't remember. It was when, back when Vettel was driving for Ferrari, so might oh. be 2018, 2019. Um, uh, he just drives into Vettel. Oh, I don't remember, I can't, honestly. I can't even remember. I think it might have been on like a formation map or, map or something. Uh, I might be wrong, and <laughs> someone will tell me I'm wrong, but... Yeah. Yeah, it was... Uh, he. He has done this. He has precedent for this in in this uh, race before. So uh, the fact he's done it again is just shocking. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't know what he's thinking. <laughs> yeah, the driver that's famous for not looking behind him, and <laughs> not looking ahead of him either. So I don't know where the hell is looking. looking at he's a danger my... to himself. What was he doing in a race car? He's yeah. going to hurt himself one day. Yeah, I'm afraid that, yeah, uh, it may just happen that Stroll may not end his career in a good way. But let's not, yeah, let's not like I mean, manifest the, anything. I'm going to be completely yeah. honest. For the least impressive driver, I've not put in once this season. I just went off on a whim and went. This today, uh, for this race, I went off on a whim and went. Lance Stroll is constantly, constantly proving people that he is just terrible. So, if, if I put him for least impressive driver, that's a good bet, and right? Because it's off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it paid off. And like, you can go, oh, Magnussen and Sargent finished below him, and it probably is a disappointing drive for Magnussen. I mean, he's you know, he starts very uh, low back anyway, but, you know, a sergeant you expect to come last no matter what race. So it's just, it's, I think it's the incident that maybe sells it, right? It's, it's the fact he's not only ruined his race, but another driver's. Not just one, he also ruined Piastri's race. Not like, yeah, not yeah, like DNF, exactly. but Piastri got 
a lot of damage in his rear diffuser and that cost him like a lot of time per lap. It was visible when he couldn't even, well, Hulkenberg was doing the same lap times as Piastri and that kind of tells you uh, just how bad the damage was. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, Stroll, I just, I'm yeah. shocked. I'm shocked he's still. Same with Sergeant, right? I'm just shocked they're both still driving. Paid paid drivers. Like, yeah. we, we we mentioned show, and he is, whilst he is a paid driver, he at least is, seems fairly competent. Yeah, he's capable of a very good drive. Of a good drive. He, yeah, he's capable of a drive. I've never really, I can't remember at least um, him ever getting into a really bad incident or causing so many incidents. Um, he's capable of driving, whereas Sergeant and Stroll, I just don't understand why they're still racing. Yeah. Stroll should, Stroll should ask his dad to employ Sergeant, because he might actually look good. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I mean, Sergeant is... Well, at least Sergeant is likable, and yeah, I can yeah, cannot say yeah, the same true. about Stroll, because... Yeah, last draw is like in the top three most punchable faces on the grid. <laughs> oh, no, 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 the entire paddock, probably alongside Jos Verstappen, because yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's pretty much last draw. Like, yeah, yeah. Every time there's a new low for him, and yeah, <laughs> this this weekend was just awful. Like every every he was P one in the practice FP one. That's <laughs> just the entire weekend. Yeah, and then it was just, so bad. That's yeah. your highlight. Oh my god. Uh, well, yeah, Stroll. Uh, we'll always have at least the memory Stroll on pole. That's, that's the only thing I can ever remember him for. Yeah. Well, um, we got the Stroll and Stan away. We got, obviously, Sunyana at the end, I think, as well, from Instantly with Magnuson. That was more on Magnuson, well, way more, all, pretty much Magnuson's fault. He got a penalty yeah, for it yeah. and unfortunately ruined Yuki's race, but not like Yuki was running for the points anyway. So, no. so yeah. Um, so at least that. Uh, yeah, I, I, again, I'm, I'm not entirely sure why Magnuson's still racing either, but uh, he's at least done something this season. He's He's... He's proven he's okay. And Magnus is decent, it's just that whole thing. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a good racer. I just think he's, apart from the paid drivers, I do think he's the weakest out of the uh, rest of the grid. Uh, potentially, yes. You're probably right, but yeah, difficult to difficult to, to tell, because, yeah, obviously he trashed Schumacher, but then got trashed by Hulkenberg, who was out of the sport for two seasons and just, just came in. And I, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, th- I honestly think Grosjean was, uh, was a bad driver, <laughs> well, was faster, definitely better than Adel. I mean, not. Grosjean had the, had the urge to crash every second weekend <laughs> until he had a very big one, and then he, he yeah, he definitely <laughs> could keep racing, yeah. <laughs> Please. I showed um I showed my friends that recently and they don't believe he's alive. I've I've shown them that he is alive and they still don't believe he's alive. Yeah, I, I was I was still confused. With, uh, how is it alive when I saw it live? <laughs> like twenty twenty Bahrain was it was it was it was difficult to to watch. Even though I don't I don't feel like Rojan had many fans. It was just the entire entire F1 community just didn't want someone to just pass away in such an incident. It must be horrible. Considering we saw him reuniting with his wife and kids afterwards. Yeah. It was very emotional. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> we're in China in 2024. <laughs> <Don't get my laughs> <emotion. laughs> I just I just love that uh, situation. Uh, okay. Yeah. Agree. Obviously not the crush, but him surviving. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> most impressive team. Most impressive team, finally. Um, Aston, no way. Not even a, not even a chance. Um, yeah. I mean, Alonso uh, was I, decent, but at the other the, the other side of the garage was the opposite of 
uh, uh, it's, it's not even it's not even uh, explainable just how bad Stroll's weekend was. Yeah, and in the end, Alonso only managed to actually, uh, you know, uh, yeah. get six points from two P three on the grid. Yeah, plus a fast slap. So oh, yeah, seven it was points. definitely a disappointing weekend for him as well, especially after two third places, you know. Yeah. You'd hope for more. Sauber is a good pick if it wasn't for Bottas' engine. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I agree but... with you, but I'm going to bring up, I'm not sure what other team had a better weekend. Like, not had a better weekend, right, but outperformed what you'd expect from them. Hmm. That's the, uh, yeah, but like, I don't think they outperformed uh, it yeah, so yeah. as much as Salba did, yeah, right? You, you expected them to be well, at least Norris with with the top fives. I definitely didn't expect McLaren to be as quick as they were, but yeah, yeah, yeah that's fair. It's it's the middle. I mean, double SQ three by Salba, then obviously ruined by the contact between the two and the sprint. Not like there was there were points on the board anyway because Joe were P nine and still no points in the race. Yeah, Bottas probably would have finished P eleven behind Hulkenberg, so yeah, no points there. But still, it was they mm. didn't have a minute long pit stop. That's, <laughs> that's yeah. I, do, I I think I think it definitely is an upgrade for them. But um, is it the most impressive team? I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let I'll leave that up to you. I mean, them not having an absolutely awful so, no. weekend. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like. They set the bar. What are they realistically? <laughs> what are Sauber this season? Are they the the? So, have they, I don't think they've got any points yet, have they? No, no. So no. Are, they're, they're are they the worst team? Points. I don't think they're the worst team either. So it's just difficult. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't feel like there's a team to give it to. Maybe an Aston I mean, kind of qualifies for it, but I don't know. I was gonna say it's either them or Alpine. Oh no, 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 Aston. Uh, my bad. Uh, uh, McLaren. Uh, there's also. But then yeah, Alpine ha- didn't get any points either. Haas so. is kind of expected it to be there. Red Bull was very good this weekend, but I mean, after winning, like. 25 out of the 23 last 24 races, it's... Yeah, and, and it's, also... Uh, it's not even a 1-2, so... Yeah, if, it, if they're not 1-2, then they've, 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 yeah. they've messed up. Mercedes is not... I mean... Not, yeah, good. Yeah, it's definitely not Mercedes. Not Ferrari, not Williams, not, definitely not Toro Rosso and Alpine. I mean, they got P11 and P13 after 3 DNFs. Uh... No, 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 no. It's tricky. <laughs> it's tricky. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just. Don't I'm, know. I'm going to leave you the final decision to you, and I don't. I don't mind what it is, because um, I get your points about McLaren. Uh, but like, you know. this, this is it. I just don't. If 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 Bottas' engine would have if, lasted if, the entire race, yeah. that, would, that would be the easiest point for Sauber. They yeah. just had a good weekend and they just had to screw it up with reliability and they don't even know the the cause of the problem and i mean uh and they're not the most impressive team for the weekend as the whole world mm. well this you know the spring qualifying was good but and and yeah. the botas in q3 was all right as well but the, there was like the two highlights i just i don't know fair enough uh, <laughs> Neither of us get the point for most impressive driver, so uh, at least there's that. a stupid engine failure, I would... <laughs> this, is, this is so stupid. Why did, have to, why did Bottas' engine have to blow up? <laughs> uh, what do I do? What do I do? Um, Hip a coin. Uh, I'm still <laughs> more leaning towards McLaren, just... Okay, oh, that's, that's fine. Oh, this is mostly due to just Lando being. Yeah, but would impressive. that not be Lando impressive driver? Yeah, this and then we don't we don't know how Piastri would have done without the stroll stuff. So yeah, Piastri. I mean, his his driving in in, sprint, in the sprint wasn't great, 
and the race. But then, the yeah, in the in the sprint, both McLarens lost places as well. Well, actually, Piastri gained a place, but you get me. Yeah, they didn't do great there. We 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 have to pick a team. That's the thing. I, I, look, I know which team I want it to be, but <laughs> <laughs> obviously, I have no doubt. I need you to agree with me. Is the issue? All right, all right. Since I'm in the lead by a lot of points, I'm gonna. And I didn't get to the last week. I'm gonna give you the point. Just yeah. because you're you need some points over me. I do, I do. But this is this is happening for the last time. I, if I'm this this undecided, I'm just not giving points based on, well, this. You know. All right. Hopefully, there won't be. Like, it's difficult to. Undecided. I think this is like the first time we were so undecided. Yeah. There was like no. Usually we have like a a team. Um. Yeah, I don't think either us get for most impressive driver. Oh, obviously not. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, And uh, Nico Hulkenberg screwed you over. Oh yeah. Um. Would you give the most impressive driver to the? Oh, okay. Uh, I think maybe Norris. Um, that race, yeah. the, the the actual race he was so good on. Um, yeah. Those would be like t- the two obvious picks are Alonso and Norris, but both of them have their own bottle in the sprint. Like Alonso, yeah, obviously. yeah. Alonso and I think uh, I think Alonso probably you drop because of the. Race not going well either. Oh, that was that was an awful strategy. To be fair, yeah, that is that is fair. But um, he still got the P seven with the fastest. He lap. could ref- he could refuse it. <laughs> I mean, do you do you refuse a strategy mid race after? True. Well, it's difficult. I don't to know. I, as much as as much as he got fastest lap, like. Uh, it's, it's still a, it's still iffy. I would say we could agree on Bottas. Bottas, okay. Um, well, it does, it doesn't matter. Neither of us I, get a point, yeah. but I would, I would also agree <laughs> to Bottas. I mean, uh, SQ three then in the sprint was unfortunately in the contact with Joe, which meant he got only P twelve or whatever, and uh, obviously qualifying uh, got to P ten, I think. And in the race was running for P11, maybe even a point finish if it wasn't for his engine doing well, sour things. <laughs> All right. Um, extra roll prediction. This is another point for you and no points for me. <laughs> is it? I didn't know I got a point. How did, how did you not know? There were, there were literally like I two watched the safety highlights cars. on there Channel were, 4. There were two safety cars and two virtual safety cars. So you, you would. You would fulfill the requirements in like every single. I was, I was evidently not paying enough attention. <laughs> yeah, that was. Yeah, there, there were two safety cars and two virtual safety cars. Both of them were before this actual safety car. So, yeah. Oh, W, thank you. Uh, you you wrote down two safety cars, but they changed it to VSC, so you had more chance of a point. But you would get it anyway, so doesn't matter. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, good sir. Alright, I think All right. you got, you got the, the, well, our record of the season so far with 8 points, thanks to the sprint. Yes, the sprint's help. <laughs> this, right. this is what happened last season as well, I think I got the record based because of the sprint. I, I think you did. Um, well, great job from you, you got the, you got the 8 points, and the gap mm-hmm. is yeah. only 2 after the first part. Yeah, uh, after so many... Shocking results from me to bring it yeah. back down to two. You caught up. Um, I can add the highest score as well seven to eight. So you lead there, but I just I just lead in the in the points. Yeah, yes. Well, uh, yeah. uh, next race is I'm not actually sure. Miami, Miami, Miami? yeah, Miami. It's mm. yeah, we have a blue Ferrari as well. How do you feel about that? Oh, I, I haven't seen it. You didn't? You, you, you're a lot more... I, I, uh, I've been I mean, dealing the, with a lot of personal stuff, so... Yeah, the been, the uh, car wasn't busy. revealed yet, but the driver overalls were, and it's like a 
very light blue, like the almost the golf golf blue that McLaren used, if you remember that, or Williams. Uh, no, I have no idea. I'm going to go look it up right now. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not, I don't know how to feel about the blue Ferrari around Miami, but they just announced a huge title sponsor, so I guess that's acceptable. Yeah, they have announced that it will be blue. Well, okay. Okay, well, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. Um, well, okay. I, I just can't imagine a Ferrari not being red. I can't. <laughs> apart from when it's yellow every now yeah. and again. Yeah, they they were they were not red for only two occasions in the entire history, and the last time it happened was like 1960s. So it was a long time since the Ferraris weren't red. Yes, yeah, exactly. It's been ages. Um, so yeah, that's a very exciting, very exciting to hear. Yeah, I don't think there were there are any global mentions. Uh, there are a few upgrades, obviously pending. McLaren with a huge upgrade, apparently, and you know, Ferraris for Imola. So, yeah. Apart from that, I don't really know if there's anything to say. Um, yeah, we got. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can't. I can't think of what to add. Uh, thank you very much for having me back on. Oh, yeah, uh, I, can, I can wrap it up because we've been talking for almost an hour. For an hour, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, uh, 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 we'll figure <laughs> out if I'm here for the prediction video. Um, you know what... what uh, actually, I don't know if I told you, but I'll tell you in private yep. why I might not be. Um, okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm very excited for, for the comeback. Now that I'm uh, on my way back to your amount of points. Yeah, it's a uh, it's two points gap, so all to play for. Okay, exactly. Thank you again for coming to my podcast, or <laughs> I guess we yeah. should call it podcast. podcast team. Oh, what, should we, should we mention that we're on a team uh, and people should watch us? Uh, of course, so people should watch the team podcast in CGM this Friday. <laughs> at, uh, I think that's 10 p.m. See Central European summertime, or however it's called. So yeah, uh, make sure to watch us. Uh, we're gonna win, obviously, as yes, we we like to win, and we're gonna win, and it's gonna happen. Anyways, thank you everyone who's been watching this video, as we who've been watching us for this entire time. Um, apologies for the spreadsheet not being on the video. Well, the video footage for half the half the podcast. I once again forgot. Luckily, uh, I remembered. <laughs> luckily, I remembered uh, in the middle of the podcast. So this time, half of it has actual footage. Anyways, uh, thank you again for watching. And uh, uh, if you like this video, enjoy. It. <laughs> Sorry, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, like the video, and comment down below what you want to see from us moving forward. And until next time, see ya. Peace.